Welcome to Cutting It Close, a brand new channel on YouTube where we talk a little bit of business, make some cool projects, and then also go over woodworking technology. So today I wanted to talk to you about a practical guide to feeds and speeds. So I run a business, um, a woodworking business, and I have four different CNC machines and anywhere from 10 to 20 employees throughout the year. And so feeds and speeds are very important to me and, and, and my company. So I want to just go over a practical guide to how I calculate feeds and speeds, knowing what my machines can handle, what my bits can handle, and really the, the basics of what feeds and speeds and how to determine what is right for you. So first things first, let's go over the number one basic principle that you have to grasp and fully understand to be able to calculate what your feed rate needs to be, how, what your depth needs to be, all that good stuff. And that number one principle is understanding what is chip load. So I'm not going to show you all these crazy charts where you, it, you think you have to be a physicist to understand of that bit spinning and it, it hits it this certain direction, the angle of the cut. I mean, that's good um, for a lot of metal machinists and stuff like that. But when you're dealing with wood, um, you know, it, it doesn't have to be that complicated. So what chip load is, and all you need to know about chip load, is the amount of material the bit needs to cut in order to shed the heat from the bit to the material so the bit can stay cool. So let me say that again. It's the amount of material a bit needs to cut in order for it to stay cool. And that material actually sheds the heat away from the bit out of the project and keeps the bit cool. When a bit gets too hot, it starts to get dull. So I have this very scientific representation right here uh, that I'm gonna show you with my hand and a pile of sawdust. I can zoom in real quick so you can see of what that actually looks like. So my hand is a cutter head on your, or a cutting flute on your bit. Now, the bit needs to take away so much material away from your project you're working on in order to stay cool. If it starts taking too little, like this, and just a little bit, and a little bit, and a little bit, and it's not the correct chip load, this bit is gonna start rubbing, okay? And it almost does a rubbing action. And when that rubbing action starts happening, it starts to warm up, just like my hands do. And when it warms and it, and it keeps rubbing and it keeps vibrating and it warms up, that's when your bit's gonna get dull. But if you continually cut enough chips away, because this bit wants to cut. It wants to cut into your material and actually make a big chip. It's not meant to rub. So whenever it cuts into the material, and has this big enough chip in order for it to take the heat away from this hand, or from the flute, into the chip, you're good. Now that you understand chip load, let's go over a chip load chart, okay? And what a chip load chart is, is a manufacturer's recommended chip load for a certain size of bit in order to take the heat away, to properly take the heat away from the bit into the chip, away from the material you're cutting to properly cool the bit, right? It's a, it's a tongue twister, but that, that's what it's for, right? Well, the problem with this chart is that it doesn't take into account what type of machine you have. And this is the problem that I ran into when I was first starting out with my CNC's. Now that I have a five foot by 10 foot industrial CNC that has a 10 horsepower motor on it, I can pretty much run anything on that chart. But when you have a desktop or a hobbyist CNC or even a mid-level CNC, you're not gonna be able to get that recommended chip load on your CNC. Maybe if you have an eighth inch bit or a three sixteenths bit on your smaller CNC's, but once you start getting into the quarter inch bit, three eighths inch bit, half inch bit, you're gonna start running into problems where you can't possibly run your machine that fast. And, and, and herein lies the problem. So this is what I consider a entry level tabletop or desktop CNC. And what that chart doesn't take into account is someone using an entry level or desktop CNC that may not be able to handle such bits as this half inch by three inch long bit, right? And, th and that's the bad news. And I'll even pile on more bad news on top of that. This CNC or an entry level or hobbyist or whatever you want to call it, desktop CNC, is probably even not going to be able to handle a three eighths inch bit, maybe not even a quarter inch bit, because a quarter inch bit in hardwood I think needs to run at 350 inches a minute. And the motors and the spindle may not be even able to handle or move 350 inches a minute, right? Much less all the vibration from the bit. The good news on this hobbyist CNC is that you can probably handle any eighth inch bit or 316th bit that you can possibly have, right? 
And another good news on the other flip side of this is that this machine is perfect for V carving. It can handle any type of V bit, any engraving bit, sign making bit, etc. So that's the very good upside of this. But like I said, the downside of that chip load chart is that you won't be able to run those bigger bits at what they need to run at. So what do you do, right? Well, if you understand chip load and know that powder is bad, right? You actually need chips to come out of your material with that, that bit actually needs to make chips instead of powder. You can find a happy medium in there, right? So when I was starting out, I was actually cutting out a lot of stuff with a quarter inch bit. And I was burning through bits probably 50% faster than what I should have been. But the good thing is, it's not like you're running this machine all day long cutting out bits. And this is the, where I get to the practical part of it, right? So if I was running this machine all day long cutting out stuff with a quarter inch bit, I would probably waste a lot of money on all these quarter inch bits because I'm only getting half life out of them. But if you're cutting out a project on the weekend or doing maybe running it two, three hours a week cutting out something with a quarter inch bit and you're running it a little bit too slow underneath that recommended chip load, then you're fine. I mean, you know, it's, it's not gonna make a big deal. What's gonna make a big deal is if you want it, run it way too slow, where you're going at 10, 20 inches a minute, and you think you're safe because you're only taking an eighth inch pass, and you have this fine powdery stuff coming, and you say, hey, you know what, my bit's safe. What's happening is that his bit is rubbing so much, creating so much heat, that it actually may break on you, and probably is gonna be worse than actually running it a little bit faster, right? So, what I mean by that is, it, you know, there's a happy medium to understanding chip load and actually running you know, those bits like that versus trying to run them either wide open or way too slow. Okay guys, now let's go to this Excel sheet that I made um, that I use in my business to help me calculate chip load. On this right side over here, I actually have a um, rule of thumb that I typed up for you. So maybe if you made it this far, you're really interested and you can either write that down or take a screenshot of it. This is just going to be something that's going to help you later on and you know as, as you go along this is just something you can reference. So this is kind of a thank you for watching and um, yeah so let's talk about it. Now rule of thumb for wood machining, your pass step needs to be one to two times your bit diameter. So if you're running a quarter inch bit you should be running quarter inch passes up to half inch passes. Now if you have a hobby CNC or a entry level CNC you probably won't be able to do a half inch pass with it. But just know it's, it is capable of that. If you have an eighth inch bit, you know, you can go down an eighth inch all the way to a quarter inch per pass. I mean, you can go less of a pass step than that, but, you know, just know it's, it's capable and should be running whatever the bit diameter is, is how deep your pass should go. Um, good rule of thumb that you know, just really helps. Whatever your feed rate is, divide it by two, and that's what your plunge rate is going to be. So example, if your feed rate's 100 inches a minute, your plunge rate is gonna be half of that. Always use a ramp when you plunge. The reason you don't wanna go straight down is when you go straight down, it's going to uh, really, it, it's not easy on the spindle, it's not what the bit is made to do. The bit is made to cut sideways. So when you ramp, I advise going at like a 45 degree ramp, but uh, always use a ramp whenever you're plunging. And for those of you that have V-bits out there, uh, one flute, can probably go about 40 inches a minute and that would be a 20 inches a minute plunge and a two flute can go to 80 inches per minute. I use a lot of v-bits. I could probably go through 30 different v-bits a year, probably do over 500 hours of v-bitting um, and I go at 90 inches a minute and a 60 inches per minute plunge on what I'm particularly doing but just a good rule of thumb, 80 inches a minute can do a two flute um, v-bit. So you go over here all I did was take down a simple chip load chart over here. And so this is what all my guys use, all my machinists use. I mean, not, nothing too complicated. And uh, instead of doing all those calculations where you have to do all this math, just put it in an Excel sheet um, and you can figure stuff out. So let's say I'm running a quarter inch bit in MDF, right? And, or, and I want to cut some MDF. So a quarter inch bit in the MDF. I'm looking for that chip load in between that ratio. So if your machine is um, you know, a hobbyist level and it doesn't have a high capacity for speeds, you probably want to go on the lower end or just below this chip load right here. So we're just going to go, okay, you're probably going to be running at 18,000 RPMs. 
and that means, and it's two flutes on your bit, so let's go down to 400 inches a minute, and maybe up to 450. There you go. So you're gonna need to run that quarter inch bit, a quarter inch down into your, into your material at 450 inches a minute. Now, like I said, a lot of machines ain't gonna be able to capable of running this, so you might have to only do it at 200 inches a minute, and maybe you slow down your RPMs to, if you're capable, to 16,000, something like that. And, um, which really doesn't, doesn't change that much, it looks like. So, well, let's see if it'll, there we go, okay. So, you may wanna go down um, a little bit on that. But uh, once again, you know, it, your, your bit's not gonna last as long as you would like it to, but you're probably not gonna run it crazy. You're probably gonna be doing a lot of V-bidding, a lot of V-carve, uh, maybe a lot of 3D uh, carving, which is, it's not gonna ruin a bit, right? So, you know, if you're running an eighth inch bit in hardwood, which I do a lot, I think it's 150 inches a minute at 18,000 RPMs, two flutes, let's see, yeah. So that's why I say your, your machine's gonna be capable of running an eighth inch bit because your feed rate's only 150 inches a minute, which is which is capable, which is possible on most CNC's. Um, see, my particular case, I'm running a half inch bit into hardwood. So I have to run this at 550 inches a minute at 14,000 RPMs for my stuff to get it where I need to go, which is crazy. And I'm actually going a half inch into my material with my half inch bit. Um, so that's what I talk about. Like th these charts are, they're recommended by the manufacturer, but they're not practical. So I hope this is a practical approach and I hope y'all can either take a screenshot of this or write it down or make your own Excel sheet. Just know it, it's way easier to do it this way than to do all that calculations and math and all that stuff that hurts your head. So this is what my business uses and I actually have this on a save file, Feeds and Speeds Calculator, for my business. Super simple, but yet again, that's all it has to be. Super simple. So everybody, I hope this helped. I hope you left with more knowledge than when you started. Um, just remember about chip load. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. Leave the comments in the comment section below. And remember, if you ain't cutting it close, you ain't cutting it right.